This is how life begins. Deep inside the uterus, an embryo starts on its incredible journey to birth. It's hard to say what animal this is, but it's certainly not human. This film shows in intimate detail how mammals develop. From one shared evolutionary route into dramatically different adult animals. Only now can we follow this amazing process within three different animals. The dolphin, a highly social mammal and a skillful predator whose ancestors once lived on land. The domestic dog, one of evolution's greatest successes, its combined senses as acute as any in the animal kingdom. And the elephant, our largest and among the most sophisticated of all land mammals, with easily the longest gestation period. Now, using the latest scientific research, state-of-the-art visual effects, computer graphics, and real-time ultrasound pictures, we can provide a unique view of animal fetal development. When, how, and why it occurs. For the first time, pictures like these are letting us explore and unlock the mysteries of the once secret world of the animal womb. A single fertilized cell divides and sets off on the most dangerous journey this animal will ever undertake. Right now, it's no more than a formless shape, one-fifth the size of a single grain of sand. From a single cell, it constructs bones from pulp, forms nerve cells before it can think, and digests food before its gut is formed. But before this amazing process can unfold, all mammal pregnancies must start the same way, by mating. For elephants, copulation is just the start of an epic journey that will take nearly two years. Asian female elephants like this one come into season or estrus about every four months, although they're only fertile for two to three days each cycle. Male and female elephants rarely get together. Females roam with other females and their calves. So when a female is fertile, she simply calls for a mate. A call that can be heard for five kilometers. The strongest male responds, fighting off his competitors. He mates with his partner up to five times a day over a period of three days. But his penis never penetrates the vagina. Instead, on ejaculation, he sprays a jet of sperm containing up to a quarter of a litre of semen at the vagina's opening. The bull elephant's job is done. He heads off in search of another female. Now his sperm travels towards the female's egg. But it's a roller coaster of a trip. The sperm face many dangers ahead. They must swim nearly two meters, more than 20 times as far as human sperm. Immediately, they face a challenge. The entrance to the vagina is just two and a half centimeters across. A third perish here unable to navigate through the opening. Those that do make it now face severe danger from the female's immune system. White blood cells patrol for foreign invaders. To them, the sperm are hostile. Many thousands are engulfed and destroyed. But those that survive this onslaught now receive a helping hand. As they enter the uterus, muscles in the wall contract, 
pushing them towards their goal. In addition, tiny hairs on the uterus wall waft them onwards. But there are more obstacles ahead. The sperm must now squeeze through a narrow winding passage, the oviduct, connecting the uterus and the ovary. Many don't make it. Biologists believe that as the successful sperm enter the oviduct, the egg emits a chemical to attract them, a final encouraging call. Of the five billion that started the journey, just 10,000 are left. After 12 hours, the surviving sperm reach their goal. But even here, they face a final hurdle. A protective layer shrouds the egg. Just one sperm gets through. The one with the essential mix of proteins, enabling it to burn through the wall. As the sperm begins to penetrate, the egg engulfs it. This triggers changes in the surrounding membrane. All other sperm are blocked out. As they fuse, the 28 chromosomes stored in both egg and sperm join together. The fertilized egg weighs under a thousandth of a gram. Yet the blueprint for building a new five-ton elephant is now in place. It's six days since conception, and the fertilized elephant egg moves through the oviduct towards the uterus. The egg signals to the mother to produce progesterone, a chemical that prevents further estrus cycles and prepares the uterus for implantation. 24 hours later, the dividing cells have formed a tiny ball called a blastocyst. Once inside the uterus, it searches for a suitable spot to attach. Our elephant mother-to-be has given birth before. Her previous pregnancies have scarred the uterine wall. This section is incapable of supporting another pregnancy, so the blastocyst travels on. At last, it finds a more receptive spot and attaches. It now pushes out finger-like projections that bind it ever closer to its mother locking it into her blood supply. This is the beginnings of the placenta. As with humans, the placenta is the only physical link between the mother and her baby. It is richly supplied with blood vessels and plays a vital role carrying nutrients to the developing embryo. It also filters waste products out of the embryo's blood and prevents harmful substances from entering. This will now be the calf's home for the next 22 months. Yet within the time that our elephant will produce just one calf, another of nature's most sophisticated mammals, the domestic dog, could become pregnant and bear young at least three times. And for the first time on television, the latest scanning technology will allow us to watch the puppies develop inside their mother's womb. Within our Asian elephant, the fertilized egg is just starting out on a remarkable journey through a pregnancy that will last an astonishing 22 months. But an equally amazing drama regularly plays out a lot more quickly within many of our own homes. The dog can produce not just one baby at a time, like the elephant, but multiple litters of puppies. 
Dogs first evolved around 12,000 years ago. They're one of only about a dozen animals that's ever shared a close relationship with humans. Today, they vary dramatically in size, shape, color, and behavior. At one end of the scale, the Chihuahua weighs in at under a kilogram, compared to the Neapolitan Mastiff, which weighs a massive 70 kilograms. No other species shows such a range of individual characteristics. But regardless of their size, the gestation period for dogs is the same, about 63 days. We'll follow a golden retriever from conception right through to birth. And for the first time, we'll be able to watch the fetuses as they develop within the mother's uterus. The female retriever usually releases 10 to 12 eggs. She's now ready to mate. The dog's penis contains a bone that may provide additional stabilization during copulation. Probably because the male needs rigidity to enter the female nearly vertically from below. He mounts her. Within seconds, he ejaculates. The two animals now enter the tie stage. The male's penis locks inside the vagina. During this time, more fluid from the prostate gland is released to help transport the sperm. The tie can last from five minutes to an hour. They normally turn to stand back to back for this process. This seemingly bizarre behavior has its roots in the dog's evolutionary past. Its wild ancestors would adopt this position to protect themselves from attack. Our golden retriever's eggs are now fertilized and traveling towards the uterus. Over the course of just 63 days, each of these bundles of cells will become a puppy in a litter of nine. It's just over two weeks since our golden retriever conceived and she's already a quarter of the way through her pregnancy. Inside her uterus, an amazing process is underway. The embryonic ball of cells turn in on themselves in a process called gastrulation. As the cells continue to divide and multiply, they need instructions, a trigger to tell them what type of cells they should become and whereabouts in the embryo they should go. Gastrulation is one of the greatest wonders of nature. First, the embryo folds in on itself to form a cylindrical tube. As it does so, it forms a patch of tissue. This is known as the primitive streak. On one edge of this primitive streak, another much smaller patch of tissue forms. Biologists call it the organizer. Every cell in the developing embryo then flows over the organizer. As they do, they receive instructions that assign them their fate. Some are told to become head cells, some tail cells. Others are instructed to form nerve cells, and some become skin. Now the nine embryos attach to the uterine wall. As they do, the uterus contracts to push them along, so they're all evenly spaced. It's three weeks since conception. The embryos are about the size of a pea. Our dog is now showing outward signs of her pregnancy. But even dogs who are not pregnant can sometimes exhibit such signs. This odd behavior 
sometimes referred to as pseudo or phantom pregnancy, goes back to the dog's distant past. For these embryos, along with every dog on the planet, all descend from the grey wolf. In the wild, only the dominant pair in a pack ever breeds, ensuring that the strongest bloodline thrives. But the dominant bitch is not only the mother for the pack, she's the primary hunter too. If she had to stop hunting while rearing her own puppies, the pack would lose her predation skills. To avoid this, every female comes into season together. The unmated bitches go through a false pregnancy. When the dominant female's pups are born, the other females can suckle and raise them, allowing the leader to go straight back to hunting. The legacy of this behavior can still be seen in the domestic dog. During a phantom pregnancy, she may start nursing toys, carrying them to her bed area. In some cases, she will make a nest, convinced she's about to give birth. The dog embryo has reached the halfway point. The heart starts to beat. Now the embryos are about the size of a grape. So far, they've developed at roughly the same pace as humans. Now, however, it is time for the dog to speed up. Unlike human embryos, which stay in the womb for another eight months, these puppies must be ready for birth in a mere 30 days. The structure of the basic eyeball is now being formed. Recent research has revealed that a dog's vision is similar to that of a colorblind human. Dog embryos develop only two sets of color receptors in the retina compared to our three. They can't differentiate between red, yellow, and green. This is how the embryonic pup's developing eyes will eventually work. The lack of full color vision is probably a result of evolutionary pressures over tens of millions of years. When mammals first evolved, towards the end of the dinosaur age, they found it easier to compete with other species as nocturnal creatures. So the early mammals needed good night vision. That came at the expense of full color vision. Day 33. The legs are beginning to form. At this stage, the paws are paddle-shaped and webbed with ridges. A set of pimple-like projections are growing around the mouth. Here, whiskers will sprout. And for the first time on television, we can see the growing puppies using a form of ultrasound called 4D. Dr. Thomas Hildebrandt is a specialist in veterinary ultrasonography. He's one of the few people in the world who can capture 4D images of animals in the womb. Unlike traditional ultrasound, 4D imagery not only creates a three-dimensional image, it also captures the image in real time, creating what's called a four-dimensional picture. These images reveal that at this stage, the pups are now moving. Their major muscles are well advanced. These survivor muscles, such as those in the legs and jaw, are developing most rapidly. They are vital for the animal's survival once it leaves the uterus, and this early movement is a form of exercise. The ears are clearly visible. The inner ear has formed. The middle and external ear are still growing. A marvel of evolutionary design, 
the dog ear is extremely sophisticated. When pricked, its flap reflects sound back into the ear canal, like we do when we cup our ear with our hand. Right now, the canal is plugged. But when this retriever is an adult, it'll be able to hear sounds four octaves higher than the highest note on a piano. And four times further away than anything we can hear. The eyes are now closed and the lids have fused. Although the placenta filters out most waste matter, the kidneys of the retriever fetus are now functioning. These produce a primitive form of fluid which contaminates the fetal environment. So when the lower and upper lids start to touch, the cells grow together, sealing the aperture. The fetus now looks at least a little like a dog, but our nine puppies still have a way to go. Before birth, they must grow claws, develop an astonishingly advanced sense of smell and grow hair, all in a period of just under three weeks. But 40 days in, these pups take an important step in their development. These 4D images show the puppy opening its mouth and displaying its tongue as if panting. What we're witnessing for the very first time is an in-womb rehearsal of behavior that will be essential later in life. A dog has very few sweat glands. So as soon as it overheats, it opens its mouth, lets its tongue flop out and begins to pant. While doing so, it moistens the tongue, speeding up the evaporation process. The pups are in their seventh week of development. You can now clearly make out the most advanced sense in the dog's armory, its nose. Inside this puppy's developing nose rests a large bundle of nerve cells called the olfactory bulb. Its job is to process the smell signals picked up by the scent receptor cells within the nose. And there are a vast number of those. Nearly 200 million are already developing. This puppy will detect some organic chemicals at concentrations a hundred times weaker than we can. That means that dogs can identify human scent on a plate of glass that has been touched and then left outdoors for two weeks. That acute sense of smell is vital to the dog from the moment it's born, for when it first emerges from its mother's uterus, it will be blind. To survive, it will need its nose to locate its mother's teats. But this is just the beginning. Throughout its life, the dog's extraordinarily acute sense of smell will help it locate food, recognize mates and offspring, and avoid enemies. Day 53. The fetuses are moving so much that they can be seen on the outside as a rippling movement. Inside, they are now touching. The pups now have a full coat of hair, light cream in colour. The nail and paw pads have developed, with the pads growing a thick, protective, insulating skin layer. The whiskers can now be clearly seen. They will vibrate at the slightest air currents, alerting their owner to the presence, size and shape of nearby objects. They also help to protect the eyes. One touch on the whiskers causes the eyelids to blink. 
They're similar to ordinary hair, but more than twice as thick, with roots set three times deeper. And now the entire body, including the pores, is covered with touch-sensitive nerve endings. There are just two days left. Now the uterus is getting crowded and the fetuses increasingly stressed. As they push against the uterus wall, their supply of oxygen from the placenta becomes restricted. In turn, the lower oxygen level starts to trigger the mother's first contractions. Giving birth or whelping can be over within an hour or may take as long as 36 hours. The dog's temperature drops from 38 degrees to 37 degrees Celsius, the first sign that birth is imminent. The uterine muscles contract in an irregular pattern, relaxing and dilating the uterus, vagina and vulva. This softens, enlarges and lubricates the birth canal to ease the coming delivery. The mother tries to shred her bedding. This may be a hangover from a time when canines would dig a den-like structure. The contractions become more regular. The dog starts to pant and lies down to help her pushing. The fetuses are now turning into a head-first position. Continuing contractions force the pups towards the vagina and dislodge the placenta from the uterine wall. Birth is now imminent. Nine weeks of development in the womb have fully prepared the puppies for this moment, when they must abandon the safety of their mother's womb and face the world for the very first time. Our golden retriever is about to give birth. After 63 days in their mother's uterus, these puppies are ready to enter the world. The mother's first instinct is to tear open the sack and lick the pup clean. This stimulates her pup to breathe. The placenta has one last role to play. The mother eats it and ingests a chemical which stimulates the flow of milk from her nipples. The pups are relatively helpless. All are born blind and unable to walk. Our retriever is now the mother of nine puppies, above average for her breed. Around seven days after birth, the pups' eyes open for the first time, although they stay blind for a further three days. After two weeks, their ear canals open, and within another 20 days, their hearing will be far more acute than our own. At 18 days, they'll bark for the first time, and after 28 days, they're walking and running. The females of the litter will be capable of breeding after six months, and the males will be sexually active by the same time. In just 63 days, 
our golden retriever fashioned nine precisely tuned hunters. Intelligent, social, with acute smell and hearing. Even with night vision. In that same time frame, the Asian elephant embryo has grown to five millimeters in length, but it still has a further 20 months to go. At this stage, her embryo still resembles a human embryo. In fact, all early stage mammal embryos look remarkably similar. That's because mammals share a common evolutionary heritage. Every mammal on Earth evolved from one shared ancestor, a small shrew-like creature which walked on Earth about 200 million years ago. At around 11 weeks, the limb buds and head of the elephant, just like those of a six-week-old human embryo, are readily distinguishable. They both share the same curled-up fetal position attached to the wall of the uterus. By 14 weeks, the heart is beating. The fetus can move independently. It's now 18 millimeters in size and weighs one and a half grams. Right now, the heart is minute. Yet by the time this tiny fetus reaches adulthood, its heart will weigh more than 20 kilos. The same weight as a fully grown Dalmatian. An adult elephant's heart beats just 28 times a minute compared to 70 times for humans and 500 times for mice. With every beat, this heart will have to help pump over 450 liters of blood around its body. And it may have to do so for 60 years. Its brain looks like a bubble of water there's a very thin tissue layer around the skull. Eventually, it'll grow to weigh four and a half kilos, about 10 pounds. And it will have the same memory capacity as a human brain. As with us, it's a powerful survival tool. In a harsh and uncompromising environment, it helps the elephant store information on where the best food, water, and shelter can be found. Traces laid down in the memory can help an elephant find a watering hole it has not visited in 20 years. It's four months since conception. The fetus shows its first outward signs of the creature it will one day become. The trunk is starting to show, and the fetus looks plumper towards the rear. When fully developed, the trunk will contain an astonishing 40,000 individual muscles. We humans have only 650 muscles in our entire body. It's so powerful, it will be able to uproot trees Yet the elephant's trunk is not just an emblem of power and dexterity. It also offers a clue to its owner's unusual evolutionary past. Structures that form early in fetal development tend to be more ancient than those that develop later. The trunk is an early starter. This leads some biologists to suggest that the forerunners of modern elephants may not have lived on land. Instead, they may have evolved from aquatic mammals, such as the sea cow or dugong, which still swim in the oceans today. The trunk could have been used like a snorkel. This seems all the more plausible when we look at how elephants swim. Their necks are too short for them to breathe through the mouth. So they push their trunks above the waterline and use them to inhale.
And at this four-month stage, something else happens to the fetus. Something strange that also backs up the theory of an aquatic elephant past. Zoologists have discovered that the fetus grows structures called nephrostomes. These funnel-shaped ducts deep within the developing kidney are found in freshwater fish and frogs. They act in advance of the kidneys as primitive waste filters. But they've never been observed in any other mammal. The elephant fetus offers remarkable clues to its evolutionary heritage. But it's not the only animal to undergo such significant changes. There's another mammal that shares an equally fascinating ancestral past. The dolphin. Early dolphin embryos like this one are revealing an astonishing fact. The dolphin, a mammal seemingly so perfectly adapted to life in the water, may once have had ancestors who walked on the land. Dolphins share one significant trait with humans. They, like us, don't just have sex to breed. They also seem to do it for fun. Consequently, unlike many other mammals, they are capable of having sex every day of the year. Dolphins have long sessions of foreplay, but because the ocean is a dangerous place, the actual act of copulation is as short as possible and usually lasts just seconds. And the ocean is a pretty unforgiving environment if you're trying to breed. Seawater kills sperm. To protect it, the female locks on to the male's penis to create a watertight fit. On ejaculation, the dolphin can produce huge volumes of sperm, nearly 80 millilitres. A large part of the ejaculate is low in sperm. This may be to flush out any from a previous dolphin. But when it arrives, the sperm is highly potent. The semen contains about 300 million sperm per millilitre. That's 15 times more concentrated than that of a healthy human. As the sperm travel towards the female's egg, they swim through a passage called the pseudocervix. It's surrounded by a ring of muscles that contract after the sperm have passed through. It's an effective barrier between any seawater and the dolphin's true cervix. From the time the egg is fertilized, it takes a year to turn this minute clump of cells into a dolphin calf. Three weeks into that process, and the embryo is only about a centimeter and a half long, but the heart is already beating. These are the first of a billion beats, stretched over the dolphin's 30-year life cycle. After 24 days, strange things start happening. Although the flippers begin to grow, at the base of the embryo, leg-like limb buds begin to appear. These tiny limbs will emerge and then retract and vanish completely over the next two weeks. But why do they grow in the first place? Scientists believe this is evidence of the dolphin's land ancestry. They've narrowed the dolphin's ancestor down to a small dog-like creature called Pachycetus, closely related to hippos and cows. This animal is thought to have roamed the seashore or hunted in rivers over 50 million years ago. The key feature linking this creature to today's cetaceans, a group which includes dolphins, is a structure in the ear. 
an adaptation letting them hear better in the water than other mammals. Over millions of years, these dolphin ancestors adapted to a new ocean environment, one where they no longer had any use for legs. We can see this play out as we follow our dolphin embryo's early development. The mother has been pregnant for a month. Inside her uterus, the embryo is transforming itself. At first, what look like nostrils appear, but then they change position, moving up to the top of the head, where they'll eventually become the blowhole. And from eight weeks, in three-dimensional real time, known as 4D, we can see what's now the fetus bouncing around. It looks like it's swimming in the amniotic fluid, practicing in its own confined but very private pool. We see gulping actions as it swallows. It's just over two months since conception. The fetus is beginning to take on the dolphin's characteristic shape. The flippers are forming, along with a tail or fluke. When fully developed, this tail is not just for propulsion, it's also a weapon. The shark is often thought of as the ultimate killing machine, but the dolphin too is one of the ocean's deadliest predators. It strikes its prey with a violent thrust of its tail, sending the fish over nine meters out of the water to stun or kill it. The muscles developing in the tail will be so powerful they'll allow the fetus to stand upright on its tail fin and propel itself as if walking on water. The nostrils have now reached the top of the head and are joining together. Eventually, a flap of muscle will form a watertight seal. When the dolphin breathes, it opens this flap and exhales powerfully. And when fully grown, this dolphin will only need to breathe two to three times a minute. Humans are involuntary breathers, meaning we continue to breathe even if we're unconscious. But dolphins are voluntary breathers. They must make a conscious decision to inhale air. Unconscious dolphins die from asphyxiation. This means that dolphins never truly sleep in their whole lives. Their brain must always be active enough to initiate breathing. It's 11 weeks since conception. The flippers or pectoral fins have now formed. The bones within the fin look strikingly like the bony fingers of the human hand, more evidence of the dolphin's land ancestry. The kidneys are also forming. Incredibly, although this fetus will spend all its life in the water, it's more like a desert animal with no direct source of drinkable water. The ocean is too salty. The fetus will have to get its water from the fish it eats. We're now almost a quarter of the way into our dolphin's pregnancy. And by this time, the genitals are clearly visible. When this male dolphin is fully developed, the penis will be enclosed within the body to maintain a streamlined shape. This will eventually allow it to swim at close to 35 kilometers an hour. But the dolphin's streamlined shape creates one serious potential problem. The testicles are also inside the body. 
and sperm cannot survive at body temperature. It's too hot. As a result, nature has added a special feature. A network of blood vessels spreads out from the testicles towards the dorsal fin and fluke, drawing heat away from the genitals. And then the cooled blood returns, bathing the testicles. Inside the fetus's head, a new structure is growing, a fatty body called the melon. The melon sits in front of the skull and blowhole and comprises much of an adult animal's forehead. It magnifies and directs the clicking sounds which the dolphin sends out through the water. When those projected sound waves hit an object, they bounce back, like the sonar system on a modern submarine. It's called echolocation, and it's the mechanism through which the fetus will one day be able to work out distance, speed, direction, size, shape, and even the density of an object. It's so sensitive that when this fetus grows to adulthood, it will be able to detect an object the size of a ping pong ball a hundred meters away. Over the next eight weeks, the fetus will change color to gray. Hairs will appear on the end of the jaw. And as the mother's uterus becomes more cramped, the fetus folds around to fit into the limited space. Our dolphin's fetus is now about to develop some of its most sophisticated adaptations for its seafaring life. It's immensely powerful propulsion unit and a system that will let it safely dive down to an incredible 900 meters into the ocean depths in one breath. We're nearly halfway through our dolphin's pregnancy and her fetus now has a recognizable tail or fluke. It's made up purely of fibrous connective tissue, totally lacking any muscle or bone. These 4D pictures show the fluke's movement. Unlike fish, whose tails move sideways, the dolphin's fluke moves up and down. It's his main source of propulsion. And this dolphin is developing the ability to dive to great depths for prolonged periods. One adaptation that helps him to achieve this is the nature of his ribs. In several places, they've evolved hinges allowing them to collapse as water pressure increases. The dolphin will also be able to lower his heart rate to just 12 beats per minute and direct most of the reduced blood to the vital areas of the heart and brain. This means he can survive underwater for up to seven minutes on just one lungful of air. He'll be able to dive to as low as 150 meters with ease but can reach depths of 900 meters. But this fetus won't just dive, he will also fly. Using his powerful tail, he will launch himself out of the water in spectacular jumps, rising as high as nearly five meters in the air. One reason for this may be to remove parasites that stick to the skin. Some marine biologists also believe this behavior is a hunting strategy, herding fish towards other dolphins. Or they may just do it for fun. The fetus has reached seven months. The eyes are now moving, opening and closing. 
Their position gives the dolphin a 320 degree field of vision. The eyes secrete oily jelly-like mucus that lubricates them and washes away debris. We need to wear a mask underwater to prevent distortion of images. But the dolphin fetus will be able to change the shape of its lens to see both in and out of the water. Muscles inside the lens can contract, making it more rounded for focusing in water. Or they relax, making it more flattened for seeing clearly in air. This ability to see out of water means the foetus will be able to adopt more than one hunting strategy. It's called strand feeding. The dolphin forces fish onto dry land and then strands itself, using its excellent eyesight to locate and devour prey. It's now close to nine months since conception. There's no more room in the mother's uterus, so the fetus curls around inside the uterine wall. Once born, the dolphin will never adopt this position again, but for the first month of its life, the folds will remain visible. He's grown hairs on the beak, but they serve no purpose, and will fall out soon after birth. It's thought that these whisker-like hairs could be further evidence that the dolphin's ancestors once walked on land. The organs are now all fully formed, and the skin is recognizably the color of an adult dolphin. It's one of nature's wonders that the outermost layer of his skin will be replaced every two hours keeping the surface smooth and free of external attachments. We're now nearly 10 months into the pregnancy. Inside our dolphin's uterus, the fetus has grown tiny holes behind the eyes. They don't look much like ears, but that's what they are. Even though he lacks external ears, this fetus is developing both middle and inner ears within his brain. The auditory systems are already much more complex than in humans. Compared to us, the auditory nerve has double the amount of nerve fibers. It's a year since conception, and the baby dolphin is ready to be born. He's just under a meter in length and weighs about 14 kilos, just over 30 pounds. As he moves down the birth canal, his final fetal adaptation is revealed. His fins are folded to ease delivery. He emerges tail first. As the head appears, the umbilical cord snaps. In contrast with many other mammals, he's born with his eyes open, his senses alert, and with enough muscular coordination to follow his mother immediately. At first, he will suckle in short bursts of just a few seconds, every 20 minutes, 24 hours a day. As he learns to regulate his breathing, he'll feed for fewer but longer sessions. His mother's milk makes the baby dolphin grow fast. It contains more than eight times as much fat as human milk. He will be nursed for at least two years. He will be sexually active by the age of 10 and in the wild will live for 20 to 30 years. 
A brilliant collaborator and a skillful predator, perfectly adapted for a lifetime at sea. Back on dry land, our Asian elephant has reached the four-month stage of her pregnancy. In all that time, the fetus within has only grown to just under six centimeters. It's still so small, it could fit in the palm of a human hand. A long, long way to go. The skin is smooth and unwrinkled. The ribs can be seen through the thin layers of skin and the fetus is pinkish in color. This color comes from the blood flowing through the fetus. An elephant's arteries are so large that they need support from ridges of elastic fibers or muscle cells. The fetus is also growing veins with extra support from thicker walls than those of other mammals. Some of these blood vessels will eventually extend to 10 meters in length. Deep within, the digestive system has started to develop. It's going to be kept very busy throughout the elephant's life, as this animal will consume vast quantities of food. But the elephant has only a simple stomach, a system that will never be as efficient as that of many other animals. So when this fetus is born, it will only be able to digest 40% of what it eats. That means it'll have to spend around 16 hours of every day just eating. In the course of one day, an adult elephant can consume up to 150 kilos of vegetation. That's the equivalent of you or me eating a thousand apples in a day. It's 18 weeks since our elephant conceived her baby. Much like a human baby, the fetus is now kicking inside its mother. The legs move in a slow running motion. The head moves from side to side and up and down. As with all fetal growth, this is vital if the muscles are to develop properly. The feet are growing pads of fibrous fatty tissue, which will eventually help spread the enormous weight of the adult elephant. They act as a shock absorber, helping their owner to move quietly, despite its massive size. Even when an elephant treads on a stick, the sound is muffled by the feet. When the fetus is fully grown, it will be able to walk up to 95 kilometers in a day, and it'll even run at nearly 40 kilometers an hour. New research suggests that its feet can also act as extra ears. It's thought that elephants pick up vibrations in the ground, alerting them to a variety of sounds such as distant thunder, animal stampedes, or another elephant's calls. The foot pads sense vibrations which carry through the bones to the elephant's ears. All these elaborate sensors in the feet will one day allow the fetus to pick up sounds from nearly 16 kilometers away. We're nearly five months into the pregnancy. Her growing fetus is developing an unusual set of lungs needed because elephants breathe through their trunks when crossing rivers and lakes. The tip of the trunk stays just above the water, like a long snorkel, feeding down air at normal atmospheric pressure. But blood in the veins and arteries around the lungs is at the far higher pressure of the surrounding deep water 
and that pressure differential strains the walls of the blood vessels. In humans and most other mammals, that strain would make our delicate blood vessels around the lungs rupture or leak. But in elephants, evolution has created stronger blood vessels and encased them in dense connective tissue, allowing the animal to snorkel at depths that could be fatal to us. The trunk now has a finger-like projection at its tip. It's a hundred times more sensitive than a human fingertip. It's also so dexterous, it'll allow the adult elephant to pick up an object as small as a peanut. At the moment, the head looks too big for the body. It's almost half its total length. Nevertheless, it's much smaller than it will one day become. The elephant is a highly intelligent animal with complex social relationships and sophisticated communications. Although proportionally smaller than our brain, the elephant, in common with the great apes and cetaceans such as the dolphin, has a large brain relative to its body size. It's located in the back of the skull, away from the forehead. That huge forehead holds an incredibly light, sponge-like bone, which compensates for the great weight of the trunk. Over the next seven months, this fetus will put on 12 kilos in weight. Its brain will continue to develop, and it will start flexing its trunk. It's now one year since conception, but our Asian elephant is only just past the halfway mark. The fetus she's carrying now measures about 45 centimeters and weighs over 12 kilos. It's kicking strongly against the wall of the uterus. The baby elephant can now use its trunk, curling it right up into its mouth and over its head. At the moment, the trunk appears long compared to the legs and the rest of the body. It's thought that as it's so complex, it needs to start developing sooner. Eventually, it will weigh the same as two adult men. It'll be used to signal, trumpet, eat, bathe, dust itself, and defend itself. And when the fetus is fully grown, it'll use its trunk to drink about 200 litres of water every day, which, if necessary, it can down in less than five minutes. It's 13 months since conception. This baby elephant is male. But although the penis is visible, there's no sign of the testicles. Unusually for a mammal, they're inside the body, where they're kept cool by the elephant's relatively low body temperature. For many years, no one knew why the elephant should have internal testicles. But recent research suggests it may be more evidence of the elephant's aquatic past because sea mammals, like the dolphin, also store their testes inside their bodies to retain their streamlined shape. When this baby elephant reaches maturity, his testicles will weigh a total of six kilos. They will produce five billion sperm per day. Even within the womb, his testicles are already producing testosterone, the male sex hormone, so much that it can be measured in the blood of his mother. And this fetus is already producing more than 100 times the levels of a healthy human male.
this will increase his muscle strength and decrease his sensitivity to pain. He'll be able to fight harder in his search for a mate. And in the wild, only the strongest bull elephant will mate with the females. The fetus has been inside its mother's uterus for 14 months. He can now swallow. And as he does so, he takes in fluid from the amniotic sac, helping to keep the throat from closing up. The eyelashes, tail hair, and hair around the mouth are in place. Just like the domestic dog, these sensory hairs grow first. The baby elephant's characteristic ears are now clearly visible. They're just eight centimeters across, but will grow to over half a meter when he's a fully mature adult. This baby will need such large ears to regulate his temperature, because like the dog, he has few sweat glands. Blood from various parts of the body is transported to the ears, where it's cooled by their fanning motion. This process can reduce the temperature of the blood by about five degrees Celsius. The cooled blood then circulates, lowering the temperature of the rest of the body. Although large compared to most other animals, the Asian elephant's ears are much smaller than those of their African cousin. The African lives in the open savanna with little shade. It needs bigger ears to help lose more heat. But this Asian elephant fetus will live in a jungle environment where there is plenty of shade. And having smaller ears means it is less likely to damage them in the jungle's dense foliage. It's 19 months since conception and the baby elephant weighs 65 kilos. He is now fully developed. He has just one job left to do for the next three months, grow bigger. But these final three months in the womb are vital for his future survival. If he were born right now, he wouldn't be large enough to reach his mother's milk. A premature birth could mean starvation and even death. Our Asian elephant has just three months left of her 22-month pregnancy. Her uterus is getting more and more cramped as her baby puts on half a kilo in weight every day. But unlike humans, this baby will continue growing throughout his life. He's now covered in bristly hair which will stay on him until he's mature. It helps protect him from strong sunlight and mosquito bites. And his skin, as sensitive as ours, will be able to feel a fly landing on his back. Along with the ears, this skin also plays a vital role in keeping him cool. Unlike the skin of most mammals, it's wrinkly and loose-fitting. When he sprays water on his back, some of it is trapped in his skin's folds and crevices. Then, as it evaporates, it lowers his body temperature. He can lose as much as 75% of his body heat this way. It's now 22 months since conception, and the baby elephant is ready to face the outside world. Most elephants are born feet first, another possible hangover from their aquatic past. Sea mammals such as the dolphin are all born tail first. His toenails have already grown a soft covering to protect the mother as he passes through the birth canal. 
Although he is ready for birth, his brain is underdeveloped, much like we humans. It will be 12 years before it's fully mature. Two to five days before birth, the mother's progesterone levels drop. That progesterone has maintained the pregnancy throughout the 22 months. Now the baby turns around and starts to pass through the cervix. From outside, we can see him moving. The umbilical cord is short, about a metre long, to help prevent the elephant strangling itself during the gestation period. But as a result, as he travels down the birth canal, the cord snaps and retracts back into the uterus. But even with his lifeline broken, the baby elephant can survive for up to 20 minutes inside his mother's uterus. His mother has been in labor for just over an hour. After nearly two years inside the safety of his mother's uterus, the baby elephant finally enters the world to take his first breath. He's grown from a tiny clump of cells to a newborn weighing 120 kilos. Just 30 minutes after birth, he takes his first steps. As yet, he has no control of his trunk. It will be a year before he can use it effectively. And his eyes are not yet functioning properly. In the wild, most elephants are born at night, between 2 and 4 a.m. This gives them a little time for their eyes to adjust before the sun rises. Until he can see properly, he must rely on his mother to guide him to her milk. This newborn will consume 15 litres of milk a day. He will suckle for the next five years of his life and will remain with his mother until he's about 13. When he's fully grown, he'll weigh close to five tonnes, the same weight as nearly 60 fully grown men. After nearly two years gestation, his mother will not ovulate again for another two. She will have invested four years of her life in a single sperm. We've seen a tiny blob, no bigger than a grain of sand, grow into an elephant. In 22 months, it's grown an incredibly versatile trunk, allowing it to pull up trees, swim across rivers, and pick up objects as small as a peanut. It's developed pads on its feet that sense vibrations in the ground up to 16 kilometers away. It's been perfectly developed in the womb for the moment of its birth. And yet it now faces new challenges and dangers in our modern world. Deforestation, encroachment by mankind upon its natural habitat, and the deadly threat of poachers. But if it's lucky, this elephant will live up to 60 years in the wild. For the dolphin, too, there are many dangers ahead. For the first few months of its life, it is easy prey for sharks. Even though its development has adapted it as well as possible, with a tail that can propel it four times faster than the fastest human swimmer. For the dog, there are no such dangers. It's found a safe evolutionary niche in a symbiotic relationship with humans. We've watched nine golden retriever pups grow inside their mother's womb in just 63 days. In that time, each one of them has developed an amazingly powerful sense of smell. They've grown whiskers as sensitive as our fingertips 
and ears that can pick up sounds far beyond the range of human hearing. New scientific research and the latest scanning technology has allowed us for the first time to see into the world of fetal development in the animal kingdom, unlocking the mysteries of one of nature's most remarkable journeys, the journey to birth.